nothing like a bit of cricket on a summer's day. Sadly, of course, there isn't any live cricket really going on at the moment, although the football started this week. But one thing we can say that is live and kicking is our online services here at Christchurch Barnet. And you're really welcome for what is today, a very special day, because it is Dad's Day, it's Father's Day. And um, you're really, really welcome, whether you regularly look in on this service, which we've had for the last few months while we've been in lockdown, or whether you are just peeking in to have a look. You are really, really welcome. And I hope you enjoy every part of our worship here this morning. And it is a day, as I say, which can be have mixed feelings for many, many people, whether they've lost a loved one who was a father, or whether they had a challenging relationship with their own father. We're reminded today, above all things, that we have a Heavenly Father who's a perfect Heavenly Father, who loves us and knows us and cares for us unconditionally. And that is what we're going to focus in on today. Even in the midst of the stories that we're hearing from dads and kids, we are reminded of the fact that we have a Heavenly Father who loves us. And so let's begin with praise and worship as we start with our first glorious song together. Let's stand, let's sit, let's lie down, whatever is helpful, and let's praise God. good to praise God together. What a privilege it is. As we move on in our worship together, let's bow our heads as we pray together for a moment. Father God, we come to you today 
recognizing that we need you. We realize that in our family life, we lose sight of what it is to truly love you and to love one another. And so we confess before you that we have broken uh, your, uh, your heart in so many ways. The things that we've said, the things that we've thought, the things that we've done. And we confess our sins before you. But we thank you, Lord Jesus, that when we come to you honestly and openly, you say you will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from every kind of wrong. So thank you for the forgiveness we have because, Lord Jesus, you died for us. And so, Lord, as we move into this service where we are going to explore what it is to be a dad and also what it is to know you as our father, we want to pray this prayer of St. Anselm. Lord, because you have made me, I owe you the whole of my love. Because you have redeemed me, I owe you the whole of myself. Because you have promised so much, I owe you my whole being. I pray you, Lord, to make me taste by love what I taste by knowledge. Let me know by love what I know by understanding. I owe you more than my whole self, but I have no more. And by myself, I cannot render the whole of it to you. Draw me to you, Lord, in the fullness of your love. I'm wholly yours by creation. Make me all yours too in love. Amen. Now, we're going to go and hear from various dads and various kids about what they think about one another. So, over to you, Julie. Take us into the next part of the service. Happy Father's Day! Today we want to celebrate all the dads, granddads, uncles, stepdads, grown-ups in your life that you have cared for you, protected you and loved you. Now Ellie, should we do a little quiz? Oh yeah, that'll be fun. Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to show you a slide. So you at home, get ready. Yeah, I'm going to show you a slide and I want you to match the father figure to the children that they helped raise. Are we ready for the first slide? Okay, number one. Right, Ellie, do you know which of the children lived with Gru? Um, one, two and four. That's exactly it. Well done. Did you get that at home? Okay, slide two. Okay, did you recognise Mr and Mrs Weasley? So who did they look after, Ellie? Ginny, number three. That's right, well done. But remember, they also looked after Harry, didn't they? because Harry's uncle wasn't very nice to him, so Harry would spend most of his summers. So Mr and Mrs Weasley looked after Harry as well. Okay, slide three. Okay, that one was of Homer Simpson. So Ellie, who were Homer Simpson's children? Number one and three, Maggie and Bart. That's right, and he also actually had Someone else, can you remember him? Are you shouting out to me? What was the daughter's name? It was Lisa. That's right. So how did you do? Did you recognise them all? Okay, so I have asked some children from church what they love about their dads. And I've asked the dads what they love about being a dad. So let's watch that now. I love being a dad for lots of reasons. I love this unconditional love um, that, that I have um, for them. Um, I, I didn't know it possible to love another human um, as much uh, as I love my children. The greatest thing about being a dad is the joy that they show you, just for the smallest things that you do for them or with them. It has brought me untold joy and happiness. The way they love you, no matter what. That they each three make me so proud in so many ways. I always have a couple of little friends in the house running around, although they drive me nuts sometimes. And um, we have a lot of fun, uh, we laugh a lot together. Uh, when we knew we were having children, all we'd heard was how wonderful it could be, but 
the joy that it is to be a dad is hard to really describe. I know that a lot of people have been struggling in this lockdown uh, because they had to spend so much time with the kids. But me, I've loved every minute and every second of it. The thrill and delight at seeing their faces when they were born, their first words, their first steps. But the best thing about being a father is that I also have six wonderful grandchildren. I thank the Lord every day because my children are the best children in the world. Uh, I enjoy their company. I enjoy seeing each of my kids growing up and uh, being a parent with Judy. It's very rewarding um, watching them uh, grow and, and, and develop um, and knowing that I've played a, a part in that. love thinking about who they'll become. I just hope they turn out okay. I love Daddy because he plays with me. I love my Daddy because he plays fairies with me. I love my Daddy because he loves playing Lego with me and he's very good at Lego. I love my Dad because he listens to me. I like playing football with him and eating chocolate with him and going around the garden with him. I think my dad is the best dad in the world because he takes care of me, he loves me and hugs me when I'm sad. He's sometimes funny, sometimes cross and I, because I love him so much it's because he loves me. I love him. Wasn't that really cute? Well done guys, thanks for the videos. You know Ellie, Father's Day is also an opportunity to remind ourselves who our Heavenly Father is. In Romans 8 verse 16 it says that by the Spirit we are God's children. We have a God who loves us, cares for us and who is always there for us. I think that's amazing. So today we're going to sing a song called Big Family of God which talks about God loving us and loving everyone and he loves you and you and you. So let's sing that now. like pink and some like blue some of us like reading books some of us like feeding ducks that's because we're different me and you but God loves
Let us spend a few moments in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the many blessings of parenthood and being a father, for seeing children growing up, forming characters and sharing their lives with us. Thank you for the joy of seeing them experiencing new adventures, for being amazed by what they see and learn of our amazing world that you have created, for being proud when they show us how they can ride a bike and scoot with confidence, for being humbled when they show us the right things to do, for their companionship as they tell us about all the things that are important to them, for their hugs as they show us how much they love us, for being overwhelmed at times by the responsibility of care we have in nurturing lives and that you do not leave us on our own. Please help us in the everyday things of being a parent, for energy to do what needs to be done, for patience when things get fraught, for calm amidst the whirlwind, for wisdom to know what to do, and for a good night's sleep. We ask that you will lead us in our parenting role, and in particular as fathers. Please guide us and show us how to reflect the love that you have. Help us to show you to our children. Amen.
from Psalm 18, verses 1 to 19. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I'm saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangled me 
the torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cause of the grave call around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. The earth trembled and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherub and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him. The dark rain clouds of the sky. One of the brightness of his, out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced with hailstones and bolts of lightning. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrow and scattered the enemies, great bolts of lightning and rooted them. The valleys of the sea were exposed and the foundations of the earth laid bare at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of breath from your nostrils. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. This is God's word. Good morning, everybody. My name is James and it is really fantastic. In fact, a real privilege to be able to speak to you this morning. Whether you're in your living room or in your bed or on the toilet or anywhere in your garden, maybe, having a bit of a barbecue, watching this, you are so welcome to church this morning. Um, and I'm so glad you've tuned into Christchurch. So, I just want to update you with what's going on with my life over the last four weeks. So, we've had a really weird thing, a new um, guy has moved into our house. Okay, he is a bit like a lodger, and he's moved into our house, and he doesn't always treat us the way that we would expect someone new when we meet them to treat us. So, for example, he's actually quite demanding. He gets hungry all the time, and he he just starts screaming. Instead of asking politely for food, he just starts screaming and screaming, and then he just for some reason doesn't eat like pies or chips or anything, he just drinks milk. So you feed him milk, give him a bottle of milk and then he just wants another bottle. And do you know what? This, this guy doesn't even say thank you, not once. And what's even worse is for four weeks he didn't even smile at us. Not even once. It was so frustrating, it was hard work. But do you know what? This guy has captured my heart and I am head over heels in love with this little guy. So I want to introduce you to this little guy. Is that all right this morning? So I'm going to go and get him, okay? Okay. Now I have to be careful because I don't want to drop him. don't want to drop him. He's just adorable. Okay. Hang on a minute. Vactory. This is Vactory. He's like the well-known villain in our family and he is not the baby. I'm going to go and get baby Ezra or as Ken Folds calls him, baby Zebra. So I'm going to get him. Here is our new lodger, our new little man. And my heart is literally overflowing with love for him, even though he's not easy. He doesn't say thank you, but you know what? I, I would give my life for this guy a hundred times over. I would do anything for him. I love him. Why? Why do I love him? And I don't, I don't just um, tolerate him or put up with him. I like him. I adore him. Just can't stop hugging him and squeezing him sometimes. Um, why? Well, because he is my little boy and I am his daddy. And I just adore him because he is mine and I am his. And yeah, he just makes me, I know it's weird that I want to eat a baby, but don't you just want to eat this little thing? He's just amazing. 
Okay, I, Ezra, you've had your moment now. That's it. You've had too long. Off you go. Okay. So, thanks, Ezra. Get back to your milk. That's brilliant. Do you know the amazing thing about being a follower of Jesus? It is the most extreme thing, and I want you to try and get this. It is the most extreme thing that has ever happened in the universe to anyone. One minute you are an object of God's wrath. You are pushed out, cut out of the Garden of Eden, cut out of God's family. You are isolated, alone. The Bible says you're an enemy of God. And then Jesus comes and lives in your heart and the Holy Spirit lives in you. At that moment, you, it, it's like polar opposites. You go from there to being a child of God over here, being accepted by God, forgiven, made holy, righteous, being adored by your heavenly Father. He's adopted you. If you have, in fact, just put your hand up right now, in your living room, if you have invited Jesus into your life, that is the most phenomenal um, truth in your life. You are a child of God. The Bible, in the New Testament, I think three times, or maybe more, tells you to call God your Abba, which means Dada, Father, Abba Father, Abba Father, and your Heavenly Father doesn't just like you, He doesn't just tolerate you, He is head over heels in love with you. Did you know that God is big enough that He can focus 100% on you when you're at home, when you're at work, when you're in bed, when you're in your garden, He's focused. He would not miss one moment of your life. Just like I would hate to miss some big moments in Ezra's life growing up. God wouldn't miss one split second of your life. He adores you. His gut is wrenched for you. He's head over heels in love. His favour is upon you. And one of the main reasons he created you was so he can prove and show off what an incredible loving father he is and how he wants to bless you so much so congratulations on being a child of god and if you haven't yet become god's child if you haven't started following jesus then i just i encourage you i urge you right now if you're watching online maybe you don't normally come to church invite jesus christ into your heart and i promise you that moment you will feel a warmth in your life that you have never had before and you will be transformed and he will take you on a journey it won't always be easy but you will be adopted as god's child with an eternal security and assurance you're going to be alive forever and ever and ever with god in paradise it's just going to be so fun and amazing wow we are so blessed so, guys, if we can get this this morning, this, know the Father's love, you will rise up. We've got to rise up as the people of God, and this is our foundation. We've got to get it. When we don't get this right, the people of God really are stunted um, and, and, and can't grow properly. So, let's look at this phenomenal psalm, Psalm 18. I reckon this is my favourite psalm. And I think it's one of the best psalms, firstly, because it's in the Bible twice. Did you know that? Thank you, Nikki, for reading it so well. It's in the Bible twice, in 2 Samuel and in Psalm 18. And David is looking back over the years of his life. And he is utterly bowled over by the faithfulness, by the love, by the kindness, the grace of his Father God. He's like, God, I just... Why do you treat me so well? Why do you just bless me and bless me and bless me and bless me and bless me? God, it's, it's as though I just exist for you to bless me. Even in the trials, the, the pains, the agonies, the ups, the downs, you bless me, you bless me. Thank you, God. He's thinking of the times when he used to kill lions and bears as a child, when they attacked his sheep, when he killed the mighty giant, Goliath, when he was fleeing for his life from Saul, King Saul, who tried to kill him for years. God preserved him. And just before David wrote this psalm, probably maybe the day before, David thought that he was a goner. He thought it was over. He was fighting the Philistines with his sword. 
a, a nasty battle had broken out and David was being beaten. He was on his own, he had been isolated from the army. He, he slipped over, he was tired, exhausted, he couldn't get up. The Philistines, were the soldiers were coming to kill him with their swords. He cried out to God, God, save me, save me. And that moment, one of his best friends, one of David's mighty men, came rushing, tearing through the Philistine ranks, smashing them out of the way with his sword like he was invincible because he was consumed with love for his king, for his friend David. And he just annihilated, slashed down all these Philistine soldiers and giants even it says. He wiped them out, killed them and rescued his friend David. And David was just so thankful to God. You know, that is the sweet spot that we need to stay in as Christians. Looking back at our lives and saying, God, you're incredible. God, you're so faithful. So, here's a few things that we can get from this psalm. Number one, number one. Your father wants you to cry, cry out to him. David said this, in my distress, I called to the Lord but he didn't just call, he cried for God my help. You know, as Christians, our prayers can be very dignified, scripted, um, careful, quite stiff, um, unemotional, very bland sometimes. But you know, our Heavenly Father wants us to be like newborn babies that cry, Abba! Father! Father! I'm in trouble! I need you! Father! Barnet needs you! Father! Barnet needs you! The world needs you! Guys, we've got to break out of this kind of scripting our prayers and just being really gentle and, and um, unemotional. God is an emotional God and we need to cry out. Abba! Father! David cried out and this pleases your Father when you cry to him and ask for help. So cry out to God. Prayer is not about saying the right words to impress people, writing down, or oh, which words can I use that will impress people. Jesus warned against that. He said, don't pray long prayers in public. Don't, don't try and impress people with your words. Just cry out. It doesn't matter the words you use. Just It's about your heart and your affections being poured out with raw kind of energy to Jesus. Your affections being poured out to Jesus. That's the first thing, cry out to God. The second thing, your father actually hears you every time you pray. So David says this, from his temple he heard. Okay, just turn to someone in your, in your living room or if you're on your own, just say it out loud. He heard, he heard, he heard. He heard my voice. My cry came before him into his Ears. And I love this picture of God's big ears. <laughs> and we know God doesn't have big ears. It's a metaphor that when our words leave our mouth straight away, they go to God's heart. They go into his being. He is, fast, he is transfixed by your words. You've never said a single letter to God, a single syllable, a sing, single, uttered a single thing that God hasn't been transfixed by. You know, some of you need to hear this this morning, you really do. You've been overlooked. Maybe your parents never really listened to you. You feel like people haven't taken you seriously. You've been misunderstood. People haven't got you at times. You need to hear this this morning. Your Heavenly Father hears you. He hears you. His gut is wrenched with love for you. He adores you. Your God hears you every time. Here's the third thing. Oh, just this little picture here. This guy has huge ears like God. <laughs> the BFG, I love this Disney version of the film. Well, little Sophie is adopted by the BFG. She's an orphan and he becomes her father figure. And she knows that wherever she is, even if he's miles away, his ears are so big and his heart is so in love with her 
He's so in love with her that he hears her all the time. So she would just be in her bedroom back in, in the town whispering, BFG, I know you can hear me. And he could hear. And one day she tried something silly. She jumped out of a window upstairs because she was fully confident in his love that he would hear and that he would be straight there to catch her. And he did. He caught her. Just like Sophie being in the arms of this big friendly giant. You are in God's arms. Every cry that you utter, every groan is cherished by God. Okay, let's look at the next one. Your father's, your father's emotions are roused. They are roused. Let's see what David says. The earth trembled and quaked and the foundations of the mountains shook. Mountains don't normally shake. They're, well, they're hard to shake. For people to sh we can't shake them. Because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Now I know that if, when I was little, if my mum had smoke coming out of her nostrils, I'd better run. Okay? <laughs> but did you know that God is an emotional God? Um, he really gets emotional. Why do we have emotions? We often think emotions are a bad thing. British, we stay away from them. No, we are made in the image of God. God has emotions. So therefore, he's made us with emotions. God gets angry. God is emotional. Where there's love, there's anger. The two go together. His emotions are roused. Did you know that nothing makes your Father God more angry than when someone hurts you. Or when demonic forces, Satan's forces, the devil's forces come and harass you and discourage you. And God longs for you to cry out, Father, Ab, Daddy, help me, smash them in the face. And he will come and he will pummel, he will smash Satan in the face for you. He will fight back the enemies for you. He loves you. His emotions are stirred. I tell you, the devil better watch out when you start crying to your father. Maybe you feel that God is apathetic or passive, indifferent. Your God is not indifferent. Your father is not indifferent. He is watching you, waiting for you to cry out. Not just to say dignified, quiet prayers. They, they're good as well. But I think as Christchurch, guys, we need to start crying out our loins. You know, Bishop Rob last week said about our loins. We need to cry out from our loins, our emotions. This also shows the sheer power of prayer. When we pray, mountains shake. Prayer is powerful. Why? Because God is roused. God comes to our aid. Okay, the next one. Your father fights for you. Your father fights for you. In verse 9, he parted the heavens. He came down. The Lord thundered from the heavens. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered his enemies. Don't you just love our God? He is Awesome. I love him so much. Your God fights for you. You know, if you're a Christian, you've got a birthmark. Your birthmark is a target where Satan and his hordes will try to discourage you, distract you, disqualify you, tempt you, um, lead you away. There's a, 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 a target on you and you cannot defeat them by yourself. They're too big for you. Like David said, they're too, my enemies are too big for me. But I cried to my father and he will come and they better watch out. He is just going to smash them in the face for you and beat them back. Why should we be afraid when our father is on our side? I remember a story when I was walking home from the shop when I was about seven years old. And just about this big and... This young adult, it was really weird, this young adult came and thought it would be funny to start chucking stones across the road at me. 
I, I, still to this day, I don't know why, but it happened. He chucked a stone, most of them missed, but one smacked into my leg, it was a big stone, and I had blood coming down my leg. I went home and I showed my dad. Now my dad is, is the most calm, chilled out, relaxed, horizontal man ever. But oh my goodness, when he saw what this guy had done to me, James, come here, we're going out straight away, let's go. We went out to find this guy, he was still up the road, and he started shouting at this guy. This guy went and hid in a bush. My dad picked up stones and started showering this bush with stones, chucking stones at this guy. And I knew at that moment, I mean, it was a bit awkward because this guy was actually our paper, paper boy as well. How awkward is that? We had to give him money when he sold the papers. Anyway, um, I knew at that moment my dad really loves me. His emotions were aroused and he protected me. He stood up for me. That's what your father in heaven does. And the last one, I'm running out of time. Your father rescues you. He really does rescue you. In verse 16, he reached down from on high. He took hold of me. He drew me out. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. The thing about your father is he is the same yesterday, today and forever. And he is going to rescue you. Whatever trial you're going through, whatever temptation, anything, any storm in your life, your father is waiting for you to cry out. And he will always hear and he will always rescue you. You do not need to be afraid of sickness, of unemployment, of depression, of divorce. These are the enemies that try to get us down. But this is really important. Our God doesn't always rescue us in the way we expect. See, we expect us to expect the depression to just go or unemployment to just go. You know, sometimes that does happen. Sometimes God rescues you from the fire or from the trial. But very often he rescues you through it. He takes you through it. Why? Because in every trial, in every storm, God is wanting to promote you. He is wanting to bless you. Every storm has to come through his hands first. He is looking to raise you up, child of God, to promote you and bless you. And like in this psalm, rescue, God's rescue doesn't always look like we would expect. Maybe we expect a helicopter or a boat to come and rescue us from the trial. But for David, God sent a storm. God came as a storm. Storms aren't nice, it was black. Black clouds, God came as black clouds and lightning and thunder. That must have been scary. Maybe David thought, oh, this isn't very comfortable or nice. You know, often there's storms in our lives because God is trying to rescue us from something. He allows storms, he even comes as storms to make us better for him, to rescue us from something else. We need to trust him. As long as we are crying out to him and trusting him, we can be 100% sure he is acting, he is fighting, he is rescuing. And you might say, James, well, that all sounds very nice, but actually I've got a lot of pain in my life. Actually, thank you very much. That's never been sorted. I'm not rescued. And that is why, and I promise I'm gonna finish with this. That is why this passage is so exciting. And this is the main thing I want you to take from today. This passage actually is also about one young Jewish man who lived 2,000 years ago. And he was attacked and beaten by his enemies. He was nailed onto a wooden cross. And he cried out, my God, my father, why have you forsaken me? But his God did not rescue him. He hung there and God the Father put on Jesus all of our filth, our sin, our shame onto him, was loaded onto Jesus. And Father God didn't rescue him but turned his back away from him. Jesus was cut off from God and he died. He wasn't rescued from death. Why? So that you can be forgiven, so that your penalties can be paid. 
so that all your sins are paid for and now you are adopted as God's child with a full inheritance, a co-heir with Christ. You're adopted as God's child. And we know that on the third day, God did come down and rescue Jesus, raised him up, triumphant. It's amazing news. You are God's child because Jesus was not rescued and he had to go through death for you. So I just encourage you, whether you're a father this morning, fathers are awesome. We, you know, we need more fathers in our church, men and women, fathers and mothers who can encourage young Christians and, and put them under their wing and walk with them and help them and disciple them. But for all of us to be fathers and mothers in a better way, we need, oh there's Jesus, we need to know the Father's love and rise up. If we don't get this, we can't really be used in power by God. It's dangerous. We need this foundation. God is for you guys. He's for you. His heart yearns for you. Let's pray. Let's close our eyes. Lord, thank you that you are for us. I pray for every person watching today. Lord, fall upon them with your beautiful Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost right now. Fall upon them, Holy Ghost. Bless them. Stir them. Rouse them. And put your fruit of love, the fruit of the Spirit, in their hearts. Let them know that they are loved. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a brilliant Father's Day. See you soon. Bye. Oh
coaster of a service we've had here today the ups and downs we've reflected on but the cast iron sureness that God is a perfect father to us the one we can go to with all of our needs all our passions all our desires and hopes for the future and as we draw to a close let's just pray father God we thank you that you are with us in the ups and downs of life thank you that you're there in the joys and the sadnesses and thank you that you say that when we come to you, give us your peace. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. So, I hope you enjoyed today's service. It's been lovely to have you with us today. And do come back for more next week. But uh, just to say, we've still got Zoom, coffee and chat after the service. Please do take advantage of that. Uh, you should have got the password and the link uh, sent to you so that you can play your part in that chat and pray and whatever. Um, and just to say there's a couple of other prayer opportunities that we normally have during this next week uh, as we shift on into July. And there'll be more news about some of the things coming up in that month to do with some street outreach and also to do with some courses that we're going to be running over the summer period. But this is the day that you as dads maybe could take your kids out to a theme park because they're open, some things are, but a roller coaster might be open near here for you to go to. But go for it, enjoy today, and God bless you. See you soon. <laughs>